message begins. Number one, the gospel of grace. What is the gospel of grace? What is the grace message? The grace message is founded upon Ephesians 2 verse 8. Can you read it as loud as you can anybody? Ephesians 2 verse 8. This is Bible study tonight. Ephesians 2 verse 8. Anybody? For by grace are you saved. The word saved, yes, not just the word redeemed from hell. It's the word soteria. Alright? Not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Read on. Not of works. Lest any man should boast. Hold on. So, the grace message, look up please, is an attempt to begin to explain the fact that we came into the kingdom by the sure message of God. Are you listening to me? And the, the scripture that opens us up to the grace message is Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 8 and 9. The Bible says, for by faith, by what? By grace, we have been saved. Hallelujah. And when you study the context of that word, saved, is there are two basic words. One is sozo. Another is soteria. Hallelujah. Now sozo is, has to do with your healing, your health. Now but soteria covers everything. By grace do you prosper. By grace. Are you listening to me? So the grace message is an attempt to open the body of Christ. To say that listen, whatever happens in this life. By and by, when you divide every equation, you will find out that it's only God's grace. And is that true? Because we wake up by grace. Is that correct? The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 9 verse 11, it says the race is not to the swift and the battle is not to the strong. Look at me everybody. Have you seen people that work so hard and they don't get anything? Have you seen people graduate with that class and then become CEOs? Have you seen someone who did not read, somebody who read engineering, being the governor of a state? Correct? And somebody who read political science being a clerk in a court. Have you seen that? So, when you examine these things from that lens of grace, you get to see that, look, in this life, it's not really so much about your work. Correct? Now, let me tell you something. Here is the foundation. Is it true or false? It is true. The grace message is very correct. Your Christian life, listen, it starts based on grace. What my need in his book, sit, walk, and stand, begins to help us understand. We have examined the book of Ephesians. And the first three chapters of Ephesians tells us what? We are seated with Christ. Correct? Now, in ancient times, kings did not sit down until the battle was over. Are you listening to me? So that we are seated. The Bible says we are standing with Christ. We are seated. What does that tell you? A position of rest. Is that correct? The Bible says, Come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and who will give you rest? I will give it to you. So, the Bible says, Not of works. There's none of us that work for our salvation. As you are taking the fourth bottle of Buddha, the power of God hits you and you got to hear a message. And what happened? You gave your life to Christ with your mouth still smelling good that you were filled with the Holy Ghost. Grace. Say after me, grace. So the message of grace opens up the body to begin to see the love of Christ. If you do not understand the message of grace, you will never know about the love and the goodness of Christ. John said, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called sons of God. He said, Now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. Jacob, have I loved? Esau, have I hated? Why? God did not tell us. Are you listening to me? The grace of God. When you look at all of us, all that you see is the grace of God. I was taught by Reuben's testimony. The grace of God. Hallelujah. I've seen people who have been praying and fasting for 100 years. 
and I've seen someone who just gets up and even before he got born again, he had started seeing angels. In fact, it was the vision of Jesus Christ that made him get born again. So why is God leading me who is crying and praying and say, Lord, help me. I'm going to reveal himself to a stubborn person somewhere. Say after me, grace. That's an operation of God. But the trouble is, this is where the grace message becomes faulty. Verse 9. He said, not of works, lest any man should boast. Are you seeing it now? This is where the grace message becomes faulty. Because the word grace here does not just mean one word grace. There are two revelations of grace there. Number one is the favor of God. The unmerited access. Number two is the ability of God upon you to perform. This is the second definition that has not been known. Are, are, are you getting blessed? So there is the grace of God as his enablement. You will do the work, but he will enable you. Then there is the grace. There are times that God will say, stand still. This existence you see today, you will see no more. Other times he will say, I will anoint you. You will go around the city seven times using your two legs. At the seventh time, I will come. When you understand these dimensions, it puts a balance. So, when the grace message is exaggerated, what happens? It produces three kinds of people. Number one, a lazy and irresponsible congregation. Because everybody says, why do I work hard then? Hallelujah. And so they tell people, don't read your book. Just stand. Call forth an angel. Call forth your exam questions. And then a lot of people, because it's a cheaper route to success. So many people say it's by grace. And a lot of people stand and say, oh, by grace. I won't work hard. I won't be diligent. You see your colleagues looking for a job. You say, let them keep suffering. I will receive a job without submitting CV. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Except that I, the Lord, I judge the heart. I test the conscience. Hallelujah. The limitation of the grace message is what? That if it is emphasized and other messages, the grace message was not supposed to stand alone. It was supposed to receive the support of other messages to make sense. Are you listening to me? Otherwise, there are people who didn't go to school. Correct? In fact, Many of the wealthiest people on earth didn't go to school. So why are you in school? Are you listening to me? A young lady some weeks ago was busy writing her exams in Portacot. When MTN called her that she won an aircraft, there is a ministry fasting and praying and say, Oh Lord, and they genuinely needed commissions. And a lady who is still a student in a, in a college of education gets an aircraft. How do you explain that? They said the aircraft or the money. She said the money. Of course. Now listen, listen, listen. Hold on. To that lady, there is no gospel you will preach against grace that she will believe. Because she's a living testimony. A lot of people stand because they have gotten miracles based on that revelation but what so it convinces them that that is all there is hallelujah so a man builds his ministry and he tells you i don't pray i don't fast i don't even prepare for messages but the anointing of god keeps flowing and it's not a lie so when you see it what happens you begin to mentor that lopsided revelation and kick others when you see people praying it's a year night 21 days keep suffering and struggling for nothing when there is a better path. Are you listening to me? If all these messages are reconciled, nobody will hate anybody in any church again. All this hatred and lousy attitude is what we men of God have caused by creating a mindset and a paradigm in many people in the name of sons and daughters. So many people come with their paradigm and they fight any other person that comes with another paradigm. This is what you get in Koinonia. Number two. The gospel of faith. Or what we call the word of faith. Why 
Where do you get the revelation of the word of faith? Romans 10. Please let's rush. This is not a message we will postpone. We must finish it today. Romans 10. Are you listening to me? Verse 7. Or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring up Christ again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is near thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. You see where the, the, the whole revelation comes from? I'm giving you where they all came from from scripture. So, the word of faith is that certain people, Kenneth E. Hagin, alongside men like E. W. Kenyon, and great men, they began to press into God, and they see a dimension of Him. They began to see the relationship between the word of God in your heart, and the word of God that is spoken. They caught a revelation of the creative power of the spoken word. Hallelujah. And that there is a direct relationship between sound and matter. This was proven in Genesis 1. Ezekiel 37. Hallelujah. Science tells us that our bodies are constantly producing what? Magnetic fields. Correct? And that there is a constant attraction. Is that true? I said it somewhere yesterday. Different scientists began to explore this thing. That's what people like Isaac Newton call the universal law of gravitation. Is that correct, physics students? Let me state it. It says every body in the universe attracts every other body with a force which for any two bodies is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance. Called the universal law of gravitation is an attempt to state the relationship between man and matter. And men have been able to find out that this is a word planet. There is a relationship between your speaking and the response you get back from the earth. So businessmen and scientists began to write a book. They say positive thinking. Put it in your heart. Verbalize it. Visualize it. These are all the worldly ways of interpreting the word of faith. Then the Bible tells us in Proverbs, out of the, it says, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it proceeds. It didn't tell us where it proceeds from. Hallelujah. Genesis 1, verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, verse 2. Now the earth was dark and void and formless, and the Spirit of God hovered round the face of the deep. Genesis 1 verse 3. And Elohim said, Light be. So you keep reading. And God said, and he saw. And God said, and he saw. And God said. The same lesson was, was, was uh, taught in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 37. He said, and he took me in the spirit of the Lord. And I was in a place and I saw a valley that was full of bones. He said it was very dry. He said, son of man, can these bones live? He said, only down knowest. And he said, prophesy. Hallelujah. He said, and I prophesied as I was commanded. And I heard a rattling sound. And bones began to be joined to bones. And sinews came and there was flesh, but there was no life. Lifeless bodies lying down. The son of man, prophesy to the four winds. All wind, breathe upon this flame. And the Bible says the wind came and they became exceedingly great army. And the crux of everything according to the teachings of our father, Papa Hagin, is Mark 11 verse 22. When Jesus cursed the fig tree and they came the next day and found out that the tree was withered. And he said, have faith in God. Papa Hagin gives us a revelation that the original Greek rendition is have the faith of God. And how is the operation of the faith of God, 23? If thou shalt say to this mountain, be thou removed and casted into the sea, and will not doubt in your heart, but will believe that the things that you say it will come to pass, you will have whatever you say. This is the foundation of the word of faith movement. So men press into God 
and they found out that you can speak. Hallelujah. And then the Bible makes us to understand in Romans chapter 4. It says, even God who quickened the dead and collect those things that be not as though they were. So based on that revelation, I begin to call the things that be not. I say I'm blessed. I am lifted. I am prosperous. The hand of the Lord is upon me. Are you listening to me? That is the word of faith. And it has produced tremendous results. Hallelujah. Then, an auxiliary of the word of faith was brought in by a great general of God called Oral Roberts. He not only began to examine the relationship between sound and the manifestation of things, he found out that there was a principle according to Genesis 8.22 called the principle of seed time and harvest. Hallelujah. And then he found out that his results were amplified when he sowed and he engaged the principle and the law that God had placed. That every time you are speaking with sowing, it produces an unbeatable result. And this became the crux and the foundation of the word of faith movement. Are you following me now? So you add to your speaking word, you connect with the seed. You are trusting God for the salvation of someone. You drop a seed. It's not so much about the money. Are you listening to me? It's about engaging the law of what? Seed time. Because the Bible has said, whenever you sow it, you expect a harvest. Because you have connected that seed with a law. And Isaac sowed in that same land. Genesis 26 from verse 12 and 13. And received that same year an hundredfold. And God blessed him. And he prospered. He worked strong. He moved forward. And the Philistines envied him. Hallelujah. God himself operated that law. When he wanted many sons, he took his only begotten son and sowed him as a seed in the earth. And then he had many sons. So, the word of faith movement is not an error. For many of you who have been taught that it's an error. But where is the balance? The Bible says, whose God is their belly? It's a rightly dividing the word of truth. Study to show yourself approved. The Bible says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. When preachers began to discover the luxurious life that comes on account of this revelation. And how lucrative this revelation of God is. What happened? They began to press in it with their all. Hallelujah. So there were several auxiliary revelations that came. Prophets offering. Different kinds of offerings. They are not wrong. Are you listening to me? In Bible times, you didn't come to meet a man of God empty handed. There's no time I would have shown you from scripture. But right now, what happened? Flesh took over. When flesh takes over the activity of the spirit, it will ruin it. Are you listening to me? So now in different churches, there are basins. Alright? In different churches, there are different kinds of holy water. Different kinds of anointing oil. Different kinds of things. All in an attempt to press towards the law of faith. The trouble is, because that is a dimension that exists in God, results will still come in keep coming in that area. But that is not all there is to God. Are you listening to me? So a man who has sufficiently received results in that area will naturally not open up himself for more. Are you listening? So the whole church now has become the issue of money. When I'm preaching, come and drop money here. If you have anything, who has five naira? Just come and drop. I want to illustrate something. You will take it back. Don't worry. Now, I'm preaching. And you come and drop money. Come and drop another one. I'm preaching again. You drop money. Now, hold on. I don't have a problem with the money you drop. I have a problem with the revelation behind why you dropped it. Because many people don't even know why they did it. It's a direct response to excitement. Or end or greed. So, I'm talking about a trip. 
and I'm saying hallelujah and God opened a door for me and this guy now is coming all the way from me now you want to see that kind of result and so you run and come and drop it and lie down on the altar and go back and there is no result because the spirit quickened it but the letter at the end of it who passed the money passed the money in many circles let me tell you the truth here there are very few Christian circles that have financial accountability. Why will I not like you to do this if in one service I got 2,000? If I have three sessions in a day, I can be a millionaire in six months. So while I'm calling for the millionaire in me, I'm depending on you I'm provoking you. Hallelujah. Now listen. I'm only showing you where it stops. There are people that have come to sow seeds. I, I sow seeds constantly into the lives of people. Are you listening to me? Now I'm not teaching you that this is wrong. What are we examining tonight? Where the error came in. Are you listening to me? There is nothing wrong. Many of you do it in your churches. I'm saying there is nothing wrong. When you get back the revelation, life will come out. But let me even tell you sincerely. Eh? When, well, let's continue. I want to be your friend for a long time before we become enemies. Praise God. So Hebrews 10 verse 8, we walk by faith. And not by sight. And what people have called faith is just money, money, money. And sincerely speaking, many church members have become broke as a result of that. To the point that it no longer is uh, the member who decides with God on what to sow. We right now give people targets and amounts. Right? So our church members have become bank marketers. And now this gentleman works so hard and buys a jeep. And I stand from this perspective and I look at a black jeep. And then I look at him. There is no hiding it again. And then I look at him. I say, Mr. Man, stand up. God needs that jeep. And the Bible says, in the day that you hear his voice, see how I'm using scripture. Harden not your heart as in the provocation in the wilderness. Because there are already other people lying on the floor. It does not mean that what I've said is scripturally correct. Correct? Now this guy sows the money. Because God did not direct it, he's not committed to perform. Many members in churches are angry and frustrated. It's just that they don't have a voice. Some of you are always going to church late so that you can give the last three offerings. Please sit down. I went to a church in Port Harcourt and I saw them dance. They dance, dance, dance. They drop one. I danced with them. I went to preach. They danced the second one. I went. I dropped it. They, nobody was saying it's time for anything. The church members have already known. The third one, they dropped it. I said, ah, God, I plan only three with you. I've tried. I saw the fourth one. They will be changing the bow. And the pastor's wife was dancing. The pastor was dancing. So, the word of faith is not a wrong movement. That's why we speak the word every time. After this meeting, we are going to speak. Now, the trouble is this. When you begin to teach, listen. And you begin to say, look... All this word of faith thing is just nonsense. You see that you have brought your members away from a dimension that is obtainable in an attempt to explain a new dimension. Are you getting the balance now? So, the goal is not for us to kick away the word of faith movement. The point is to bring it in context and bring it within the jurisdiction of God's emphasis.